Good morning, everybody. It's Malik. Uh, sorry I hadn't been on in a while. It's been a, a busy time, but I uh, want to put this out there real quick. So I, I built this slide deck just very, very quickly. Um, I've had a couple of students um, today and yesterday ask me about this, and a couple that have never heard of it. So I wanted to put this out just real quick um, and then show you some sites real quick uh, for a more detailed um, a more detailed breakdown of it but to quickly explain crack this huge WPA2 vulnerability that was you know, mentioned uh, I heard about this Sunday night um, and it is very, very large. So I'm just going to jump through a couple of slides here, explain what the issue is, and then show you a couple of sites for some more information on it. So, you know, first off, what is it? Well, it's a vulnerability found in WPA itself that can lead to theft of data and decryption of you know, all of your encrypted sessions using WPA, WPA2. Every single device is vulnerable. This is not a Windows thing. This is not a Linux thing. This is not a Mac thing. It's an everything thing. Um, your laptops, your smartphones, Internet of Things, so your, your IP cameras, um, your uh, you know, thermostats, you know, whatever you have, your smart TV, Whatever you have that connects to a wireless network that is running WPA or WPA2 is vulnerable. SCADA. Everything is vulnerable. It's a flaw in the four-way handshake between the client that we refer to as the station and the access point itself. So it, it's a flaw in WPA2, not in the device. Okay, so to understand it, you have to understand what happens with WPA2. With WPA2, there's a four-way handshake. Uh, this is the security of WPA2. I can prove that I know the pre-shared key without ever having to send the pre-shared key to the device. Really, what I do when I connect to my uh, WPA2 device, I type in my passphrase. Now, that's the PSK. What I'm actually doing after I type that in is I am sending an encrypted packet to the access point. The access point is sending an encrypted packet to me when I want to connect. We then use this PSK to decrypt the packet. If we can decrypt the packet, then it's understood and it is proof that we know the PSK. Now, I'm talking about the PSK here. Yeah, there is a PMK, the master key when you're dealing with enterprise. I'm just dealing with this on the home network. So that's why we're dealing with pre-shared keys. Um, PSK or PMK, either way, they're the same thing. In a home network, your PSK is your PMK, your master key. So that's the initial one. Okay. Now, we don't want to send this back and forth, so we need, of course, to come up with our encryption and decryption keys. we got to generate that so we have secure traffic. Well, this is where the four-way handshake comes into play. So we have our client, known as our station, and the access point. The access point starts off by sending what they call a nonce value, 128-bit pseudo-random number to the client. It's known as the nonce. The station will use this nonce along with the access point's MAC its MAC and the client knots, its own knots, known as the S knots, 
all it will be concatenated together, ran through an algorithm, to create what we call the PTK, the pairwise transient key. It then sends its s knots to the access point. Again, a pseudo-random number, 128-bit, uh, to the access point. It also sends a message integrity code to verify, yes, this does come from me. The AP is going to use the S knots, its MAC, the client's MAC, and the A knots to create the PTK, the pairwise transient key. So now we have the keys generated on both sides. That key was never sent, it was constructed on both ends. Now, the access point then takes it a step further. It creates what we call the GTK, the Group Temporal Key. It sets up a sequence number and then sends a MIC, a message integrity code, back to the station. This allows for encryption and decryption in some states when we deal with um, broadcast data. The station then acknowledges a receipt, and the four-way handshake is complete. Now each key, the PTK and the GTK, each have their own purpose, but the GTK is the one we're going to keep our eye on. So, where's the flaw? Well, the flaw is in the third step. The encryption key is sent in the third step, the GTK. Well, there are times, and this can even be normally, there are times where the four-way handshake just doesn't complete. It doesn't get an acknowledgement back from the station. If the access point doesn't get an acknowledgement back due to interference or noise or a bad signal or whatever, WPA2 will reset the four-way handshake and it will replay step number three. It's going to resend the key. Okay. Now, under again, under normal circumstances, you didn't get the key anyway, so it's not a problem. But what if you did get the key? Well, if you did get the key, the key is going to be reinstalled. When the key is reinstalled, the replay counter and the nuance the initialization vector or the packet IDs, whatever you want to call them, are reset to their initial values. Most of the time, zero. Now, for security, keys should only be installed one time and should only be used one time. Okay, this is already installing the key twice and resetting the counters. Now again, if the, if the four-way handshake under nor normal circumstances did not complete, you never got the key, so it's not a problem. But what if you did get the key and this step was told to repeat? You'll get the key again and the values will be set to zero. Okay, so how does a hacker use it? They force a replay. They'll get the key, but more importantly, they force WPA2 to reset all the transmission nonces, packet numbers, IVs, again, whatever you want to call them, to zero. You can now decrypt packets because by running this key reinstallation attack, and the notches are reset, the same encryption key is used for the notch that has already been used in the past. There goes perfect forward secrecy. This, this key, these numbers have already been used. So now we can use this to decrypt. It causes every single encryption protocol of WPA2 to reuse the keystream. It's 
that you can now decrypt all packets with the same nuance. So what an attacker is going to do is they're going to they're going to very much similar be a man in the middle. They are going to run script a script to force the access point or really I'm not blaming the access point here to force the four-way handshake to repeat step number three which is going to reset all counters again when the counters are reset it's now going to go to the past and that key can be used to decrypt data okay so what I've got here let me show you two things to take a look at if you just go to crackattacks.com Matthew explains in short uh, he was the one that found out this vulnerability but he will explain in short the introduction to crack and give you a demonstration using Android and Linux now he's using Android and Linux because during the reinstallation of a key it reinstalls what we call an all zero key which is actually very 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 easy to decrypt packets but it can be done again on any device at all he's just using these two now he takes his a step further he actually even runs on top of this a post installation attack um, for SSL strip that whoever is hooked to this access point any HTTPS site that they go to is immediately stripped down to HTTP so now he sees everything that you're doing in any website the two just piggyback off of each other and you will see him do it and he will prove uh, first off that he turned an HTTPS site to HTTP as well as prove that he's a man in the middle uh, and is intercepting packets um, between the client and the AP so he'll go into details of it um, concrete examples he have and then practical uh, um, attacks as well as every CVE identifier that's already out there um, and you can read his entire paper um, he is going to present this on November 1st at CCS Computer and Communication Security Conference um, but read the paper goes into a ton of detail they are patching things ZDNet has a great site up that will show you everything that's out uh, as of now that has been patched. Um, Apple and, and iPad have found out about it and said they'll roll out software in the next few weeks. Um, Cisco is aware of it and says they're working on it. Microsoft already has some out. So, you know, it says some machines are generally safe but there is security fixes already available um, so you know, keep an eye out on, on this install your updates install your hot fixes install your patches because every single device you have is vulnerable to this it doesn't work if you uh, patch one machine you know your access point but do not patch your clients every single thing needs to be patched which in lies a huge issue when we're dealing with the internet of things which patch the patches are not common and in some cases patches are just non-existent um, so with IOT devices patches may be four or five six months out if ever so there's not going to be a fix they're always going to be vulnerable secure all of your devices 
Uh, I mean, Shannon Morris even said on Threatwire today, uh, you know, <laughs> your, your, your best thing to do if you cannot patch your device, you cannot patch your phone, uh, you know, you're going to be vulnerable if you join a WPA2 network. It may be better just to start using your, your LTE, you know, using your cell data. Um, use wired instead of wireless. I mean, we don't have that choice on everything, but you just got to be mindful of it until all your devices get patched. So take a look at those two sites. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of other sites that, that explain crack. I just wanted the, the little overview of it to, to help you guys out. Um, so that's what it is. It's just a vulnerability in the four-way handshake um, by force and a reuse. So that's the breakdown of it. Hope it helped a little bit. Um, I'm headed up to bed, back off to work tomorrow morning to teach CEH. So uh, you guys have a great night, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.